Hey everyone, it's Tara with the Painted Cicada and welcome to Sunflower Love Mixed Media Painting. I am so glad you are here with me tonight. Um, if you're watching with me, go ahead and say hello if you're going to paint along or hi to all of you out there who are watching on the replay. Um, I don't know about you, but this um, time change thing has got me feeling a little funky today. I feel like it's so much later than it is. It is eight o'clock here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I feel like it could be midnight. Um, anyway, uh, this lesson, uh, is kind of like my little farewell to, uh, farewell to summer, farewell to fall, uh, here in Cincinnati as soon as, uh, Really, as soon as Halloween is over, we get a drastic temperature change and we start to feel the winter. So that's what this painting kind of represents to me. Um, and instead of just doing a sunflower, I really wanted to shake it up and just bring in a hint of mixed media. Uh, for a long time, mixed media was my uh, art form of choice. I really just liked mixing things up and I got away from that for a little while and I really focused on acrylics and alcohol inks. And um, although this is not what many would consider a full mixed media lesson, um, it's just got enough of it that it, it makes me excited. So um, welcome. Uh, let's talk about the supply list before we get started. Uh, so I will be working on a 9 by 12 canvas here. Uh, you can work on any size. Um, the tracer provided should work on a 9 by 12, 8 by 10. Um, and you might be able to enlarge it as well, um, depending on your printer if you want to go larger. Uh, for the background, um, I will be using black gesso. Um, black chalkboard paint will also work. Um, if you have to use a black acrylic, a matte black acrylic is going to work best, um, but it may be a little difficult to get the chalk to behave like you want it to um, on a glossy acrylic surface. Um, we, we will be using chalk to uh, have a little fun with that background. And then for acrylic paint, the colors that you're going to want are a deep red. Uh, this is a lizard and crimson, um, a deep yellow. I've got cad yellow. Um, you could even probably go a little deeper uh, if you wanted to. Any dark brown, I'll be using raw umber and then black and white. So not very many colors which makes this super easy. Um, as far as the yellows and the reds, honestly, you can change those up. I've seen sunflowers in all uh, shades. We have a beautiful sunflower farm very close to my house. Um, and they have some that are dark shades of, of burgundy and purple. Um, we've got oranges, we've got really light lemony yellows, and we've got really deep yellows. So um, use what you have or use what you love. And then, um, of course, you're going to need water, paper towels, a palette to put your paint on, uh, paint brushes in various sizes. The size is going to depend on the size that you're working with tonight. Um, but it's always handy just to have a small, medium, and large flat and a small, medium, and large round. Um, tracer is provided for this one if you want the flower to look exactly the same. This is a fairly easy flower to draw. Uh, if you wanted to do that. Um, heat gun or hair dryer is optional if you want to speed along the process. Um, and then you are also going to need um, some sort of spray fixative or spray varnish. Um, and so I'll be working with Krylon Workable Fixative. If you have um, just a clear coat spray paint, you can use that. Um, anything that you can spray to seal the chalk. Uh, that will help you uh, with your background. Now, if you don't have this, you can skip that step and you may at the end just need to um, add a little more chalk to your background, but you will want to seal that eventually because the chalk will always rub off. Um, so this is what I'll be using for that. 
Alrighty, Roo, let's get started. Um, so, the first thing we need to do is get a layer of black on this canvas. And um, in order to do that, I'm using my heavy gesso. Um, it doesn't matter if you've got light gesso or thinner gesso, but basically we just want to get a nice coat of black on here. Um, if you are using chalkboard paint, that was one of the things that I recommended. Um, in order to get nice coverage with your chalkboard paint, um, you're going to want at least two coats. So, um, I'm just going to dip right into my gesso and we are just blacking out this canvas. And so one of the tricks when you are adding a dark color and you need to cover a really light color, so for example this black and I need to cover white, is we're going to do two coats. And the first coat I am going to do vertically and the second coat I'm going to do horizontally. And that will get me much better coverage. And that is especially true if you're using chalkboard paint. So you want to use one coat going in one direction and then turn your canvas and have one coat going in the other direction. Don't forget as you're painting, if you have um, a raised canvas, uh, a framed canvas, this is a, the perfect time to get your sides painted as well. So I painted one completely vertical. I'm gonna dry this and then I'm gonna turn it and do another coat. So I'm gonna mute myself so you don't have to listen to my uh, dryer here. And then I'm going to flip it and do the other side.
And by doing this um, background coat in two different directions, it just makes sure that we get all those nooks and crannies from the textured canvas. And so I've got my two coats on here. I'm just going to let this dry and then we will move on to the next step, which is adding some chalk marks. All right, so for the next step, we are just gonna grunge this up a little bit with some chalk. Um, so I'm gonna use white chalk. I think that lends itself to um, the piece, but you can use colored chalk if you have colored chalk. Um, you could also use or substitute colored pencils if you didn't have chalk available. Um, but basically what we're going to do is just kind of doodle a little bit on the back and we're going to do this, um, we're going to do the doodles in two layers. So feel free to do whatever kind of doodles make sense to you. Um, in this first step, a lot of this is going to be covered or smudged. Once you get, you know, pretty good coverage with the doodles, just take your fingers and we're just going to smudge some of this around. And the idea here is to get a lot of mess on this background, okay? We want a lot of the words to be unclear. We want, you know, a lot of the black to get a nice chalky layer to it. Um, you can even kind of smudge over it some more if you want some 
variation in the amount of chalk. And then we're going to go back in with layer two of the chalk and this will um, be more visible. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, the things that you do on the second layer, we're not really going to smudge quite as much. And part of the reason we were we wanted to use um, the gesso or the chalkboard paint is it really has some grit uh, that holds some of this chalk. So when we've got that second layer here, what I like to do is just kind of go over what I've done and smudge it out a little. I still want you know some of this to be pretty visible. I don't need to be able to make out words, but nice. Uh, lines are important. And then the last thing we're going to do with our chalk is I'm going to gently blow on this so that there's no, no um, chalk powder. I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm gonna flip my tracer over and cover the back of the outline with chalk here. And then flip. And this is how I am going to transfer my image. So then um, now I have a layer of chalk in between my paper and the canvas. And when I go over my tracer lines, it should transfer them. If um, this is something you do want to just draw with chalk or if you have trouble with the tracer, um, start by drawing a heart here in the middle. And then we're going to draw a slightly larger circle around it. And then you're going to go around that circle and we're going to add a top layer of leaves or petals, I guess uh, is what I should say. And then once you add some petals going all the way around, you can start adding petals in the background. So to get the tracer, I started with my top layer of petals. And then once I got back to my starting point, I just added some more in, um, in the background. So that is how we got the design. And it is absolutely okay if your sunflower and my sunflower are different because they're all different. They all grow in different shapes and lose petals and face different directions. Don't worry too much about having an exact copy. All right, let's see how that transferred. All right, so this transfer uh, clearly is very light, but I can come back through with my chalk and make it a little darker. 
which makes things easier for me to paint. And at this point, this is a very chaotic and messy piece. But once we start adding acrylic, it's really going to tone down a bit. So I've got my tracer transferred and in areas where it wasn't real clear, um, I just sketched it in. I just drew it in. Um, this is my design. And so, you know, feel free to change it. Um, and don't feel like you have to be married to the exact, uh, design that I gave you, you know, petals are petals and leaves are leaves down here. And if they have a different shape, that is absolutely okay. All right, what we need to do at this point is we need to affix this chalk. Um, so chalk and chalk pastels and colored pencils are really fun to use in mixed media, but we have to have a way to seal them and hold them in place. And that's where the workable fixative comes into play. Um, you can also use, let's see, um, a spray varnish. Um, if you have something like that, or just a clear spray paint. Um, now, obviously, um, on any of these, they say vapors um, are harmful. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just put up a five minute break here. Um, I'm gonna encourage you to go outside um, and just give it a, a quick spray. And all you have to do is just, uh, you know, lightly hold it in the corner and just spray so that you get good coverage. And um, it shouldn't take longer than five minutes for this to dry. And then we'll move on to the next step. And because um, this is pretty an pretty important step, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just work the five minute break into the lesson so that you don't have to pause. So um, that's what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and give this a spray spray and then we will meet back here in five minutes.
so just realized I'm muted. Not the best way to teach a class. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, sometimes I'm such a ding dong. Okay. So what I did for this step here, um, if you were watching, is I took a little bit of white paint, just very little is needed. Um, I thinned it out with water and I added a very thin coat all um, around my tracer design. And um, this is just to give a nice vibrant background to the petals. Um, and so uh, here in the center, it's not as important uh, because we're gonna use some of that brown um, but for the petals, I just want um, a very thin coat of white. Um, it's okay if you leave the outlines so you can tell where the petals are. And it's also okay if some of that black pokes through. We don't need a perfect outline. Um, and then again, I did it down here so um, I could have a little more vibrancy on the petals when I add my white and gray down there. Um, but this just helps us to get some vibrant color as we layer on top. Uh, you definitely still wanna be able to see your shapes. Um, it's okay to thin down the paint quite a bit. Um, you'll see as you're working the white on the black that it really does uh, take very little paint to get this desired effect. So less is more. Um, Sorry about muting. Sometimes I get ahead of myself a little bit. All right, so um, once you have just a little coat of paint there, um, and you don't need a lot. Like I said, we're just doing this so that the colors pop really, um, because if we were to paint on that black, it would be very difficult. It would mute all of our bright yellow. Um, so uh, once you do this, we are gonna move into uh, adding some color down here at the bottom, or actually I guess it's black and white uh, down here at the bottom. Um, so I'm gonna get some black uh, and we don't really need a lot of black. So just, just a pinch. Oops. Getting to the end of my tube here. Definitely didn't need that much, but that's what it decided it wanted to do. So, all right then. Um, we get a little more white. All right, so what I'm going to do here is, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to use about uh, four parts white to one part black. So I don't need a lot of black, and I'm just going to mix it in here and get kind of a, a nice gray color. Nice medium gray, maybe a little darker than that. Let's see. On camera, this is showing a little lighter. So what I'm going for here with this gray color is I want it to be um, about halfway in between white and black. So a mid shade of gray is what I'm going for. And depending on the paints that you're using and the pigments, it might be, um, you know, a little different how you have to mix that up. But I'm going about halfway between white and black. All right. Now, once I get that color, I've got way too much paint on this brush for mixing. Uh, but this is about the shade that I'm going for here. What I'm going to do is I am going to paint my leaves and my stem in this halfway color.
When I do this, I want to make sure that I'm hiding any of those tracer lines that I've got a nice smooth edge. Oops. Made my stem really thick there. I've got way too much paint on this brush, so I'm going to have to go nice and light with my line. All right, so once I have this uh, mid-tone on there, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get some white, um, and I'm gonna pull some off to the side here, and I'm gonna mix a lighter shade of gray. I should have just saved some, because I had so much. Um, but once I get this lighter tone, what I'm going to do is just add some of that lighter tone up on the top. And I can kind of blend it down, blend it in. And I don't want it to be pure white. I want it to be, you know, a shade. I can mix that darker color upwards. That helps. But that just gives some variation on this leaf here. And I like mine to be kind of painterly, so um, I don't mind seeing the brush strokes there. What I'm going to do for now is let that dry. We are going to move into our yellows. Um, in a later step, we are going to add the veins back in with the lighter color of white. Um, all right. Next, what we're going to do is add some yellow. So I'm going to pull out my deep yellow. Um, we're going to do some wet on wet blending of this yellow. So I'm going to get out the yellow and I'm going to get my deep red ready to go. Um, but first, uh, what we're going to do Let's see. I'm going to get a nice small brush here. All right. So first what we're going to do is I have a nice small flat brush and I'm going to get a lot of paint and I'm going to go over each one of my petals. At this point, the white is dry. Some of that black peeks through, which is absolutely okay. That adds some variation as well. So I am not worried about that one bit. That's kind of part of the design for this painting. Um, and the idea here as I apply this is I really don't want to go too thin. I want to make sure I get all my tracer lines covered and I have a nice thick coat of paint because we want this to be wet uh, when we add in our shading color. So go nice and heavy with the paint. We don't want to thin this out, uh, especially if you are using craft paint or a liquid paint that dries quickly. Um, definitely want to go thicker rather than thinner. You can see it as you're adding your yellow, uh, why it was so important for us to get that uh, white base layer first, because in sections where the black uh, peeks through, you can see how, um, how much of that 
transparency from the yellow. We would have hardly any yellow if we did not do that layer. All right, and as I get back here towards the beginning, I'm just gonna make sure that there's plenty of yellow paint, that it's still nice and wet, because we're gonna do wet on wet blending, and we need wet paint for that. to for the next step once I get all this nice bright yellow um, I'm gonna dip into my deep red that I have on my palette here and I'm gonna start here uh, kind of in the middle and I'm gonna pull out some shading and I want to do this with the, the petals that are on the top first um, so you can decide, you know, which ones you want to be on the top and which ones you want to be on the bottom, but I'm just adding some shading around the edges and then pulling up, you know, a line or two or three up the center of the sunflowers. So I'm going to start with these petals here that are on top and I don't want too much, but I do want to be able to blend it into that yellow a little bit there so starting with the top petals add a line or two down the center and I'm just going to work my way around pulling some of that shading into the wet paint And I pull the line several times so that the yellow has a chance to mix. If you find that your yellow um, has dried too quickly, you can always go back and add in a little yellow. So for example, up here, you know that one ended up quite red. I can always try to blend in a little yellow. So I'm gonna do my top petals first. Uh, 
And then I'll go around and do my back petals. The amount of red that you mix to orange is totally up to you. You can have more red, you can have more orange, however you want to play with it. Neither is right or wrong because sunflowers come in all shades of these colors. Once I've gone all the way around, I can play a little bit um, with the light and darkness of the color by adding in more yellow. Um, you know, if I feel like there's too much red, I can just brush a little yellow in there. Um, if I feel like there's not enough red, I can always add more. So don't be afraid once you go all the way around to kind of adjust your colors. Um, Remember that part of this design is letting some of those black uh, highlights or lowlights poke through from the outline that we did very loosely um, when we did that white. So it's okay if some of that pokes through, that'll add some shadowing to your layers. All right, while we have these colors out, what I'm going to do is mix um, like two parts of this yellow with one part of this deep red here. And it's going to be mostly red. It's going to be a very deep orange. And that's what I'm going for. So it's just a little more orange than the deep red that we've got there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and just paint a layer on this background. So I still wanna be able to see the heart. Um, but I'm gonna add coloring in here. And part of this design is letting some of the blackness poke through from that background. So uh, a very thin coat is fine. You'll see I'm not too worried about coverage. I'm more worried about the design here. Thank you. 
All right, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Um, and while I do that, I'm gonna pull some of my white back out with a very, very thin round. So get your thinnest round brush. Um, if you don't have a super thin brush, you just wanna use really light pressure. And I'm gonna thin down this white just a pinch. So it's nice and fluid. And then I am gonna add a white line right down my stem here and then I'm going to add the veins back in to my sunflower and you can use the picture on your supply list if that is helpful but it's basically a line with some V's We have one more step that we're going to do with that. We'll come back to that later. going to let's see I'm gonna pull out my larger round brush here paper towels are kind of a mess that is okay so this is like a medium size round same one that I used a little earlier I'm going to dip right back into this uh, red from earlier, straight out of the tube, my deep red, my alizarin crimson, and I'm going to pull um, some more shading out around my petals. And so what this is going to look like is um, the underneath petals are going to get a lot more of this dark shading around the edges. I'm pulling right out from the middle and kind of up and around those top petals first to add the darkest of my shading on the back petals. because they ultimately would be the most shadowed. So getting some shading in there, that's really gonna highlight which petals are top petals and which petals are bottom petals. Um, on the petals where there's just one side um, that's covered, you can kind of sneak in some shadow there as well. And while I'm working with this bright red, I am going to get a nice uh, thin covering of this on my brush. Uh, and I'm going to stipple around uh, the outside of this heart. Um, and I'm going to just add dots. All the way around this section. And I'm not going to go completely up to the edges, and that's fine. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside, but I definitely want to know 
where the heart stops and the other design begins. But I'm just tapping in dots of color, dots of this red. All over both of these sections. Okay. All right, next, <clears throat> I'm going to use that same brush, a medium to small round, and I'm going to get some black. And with that black, I am going to dot the outline of this heart with black. And if it touches some of that red, that's fine. And then I'm going to do the same thing around the edge of this circle. And it's not, uh, when I say stippling, it doesn't need to be, you know, a perfect line. It's just kind of random dots around that edge, around that outline. I will lift this up closer to the camera so you see, but it's okay for that to be a little bit messy. All right, now this is where our dark brown comes into play. And you don't need very much, and I'm gonna use that same brush I'm going to clean the black off, dip into this dark brown, and I am going to add dark brown in the center of this red heart. And then dark brown outside here. And so as I'm stippling, a little of this might cover the red, a little of this might touch the black or cover some of the black, that's okay. This just adds another level of color to this section. And I'm going to come through and kind of just tap a little bit in that black as well. But I don't want to lose the darkness of those edges. And so after that step, that's what that looks like. All right, then I'm going to go back to my yellow. Um, I am going to add a pinch of white to this yellow just to increase the opacity. Yellow is a fairly uh, transparent color. So a pinch of white does help with that. Um, and then again, I am going to come back and stipple. This time, um, I'm going to be intentional with the stippling. So um, I am going to add just some really light, small dots kind of around the edge. Some are gonna be lighter and bigger than others and that's fine. And then I'm gonna go around the outline of that heart. And the paint here is all still wet. So if it picks up some of that color, just dip right back into your paint, mix it up a little, and then pull some more out. All right, so we've added to our outline, we've added to the outline of the heart, and now I'm just gonna tap just a little bit in between these two. 
just a little variation in color. Notice I didn't add any more paint on my brush. I'm just working with what I have, kind of blending some of that out into the dark area. Now up close, you can see it's kind of messy. It's very textured. But as I set this down from farther away, it looks like the center of the sunflower and there's some nice shading. All right, so we are gonna let the center of the sunflower flower dry a bit and we're going to add a little more shading down here at the bottom. So I do have some of my dark gray left over. I'm going to scoop some black into that and darken that up. And then I am just going to pull some black outlining right down at the bottom for some shadow of these leaves. And then about halfway down, I'm going to pull in some dark shadow right down my stem. I'm going to wipe off my brush so that I, it's pretty dry brush and then I'm just going to pull some of that upward. And kind of blend it out with a dry brush technique. Next thing I'm going to do is thin some of this out. You may add a little more black if you want. Um, with my smallest brush here, I'm going to pull a little darkness around some of this veining on the bottom. So I, I lift this up close again, uh, that dry br brush technique just kind of uh, smudges some of that paint out. It's very messy, almost kind of chalky, like rubbing chalk on there. From far away, it adds a nice shadow. And then up close, you can see that veining. I just add a little shadowing around the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do with that same really dark gray color um, is I'm gonna come up here um, and just add a little more uh, texture to the leaves. So I'm gonna pull in a line or two right up the center of some of those petals. giving them a little definition, little shadows so that, you know, it looks like there's bends and folds in those petals and less is more. So only do, you know, one or two on each petal. It's okay if, you know, your line breaks and you have a break in the color. And then once I do that, um, I'm gonna come through and maybe just add a little, darkness around that edging and you can do that with your dark gray or even your black. So just pulling um, some shadow around the top petals to really darken that. It's going to make some of those pop. Again, less is more. Don't do it to every petal. Just do it to a couple of the top petals.
And for the most part, friends, we are done. Um, from here on out, it's really just your uh, personal choice as to uh, what you do with your touch-ups. Um, I think I might add just a pinch of yellow here and there in my petals. Um, so I'm going to go back into this lighter yellow and just pull you know, a pinch of yellow here or there just to brighten it up a bit. And that's just kind of my preference. Um, you can certainly do any touch-ups that you feel are necessary. Certainly every time I do a painting um, and then, you know, I have a sample and then I do uh, a demo they always turn out just a little different. So if yours is slightly different from mine, that is absolutely fine. That is a beautiful thing. Um, so play with it, touch up however you want. Um, you can even, if you feel like you lost a lot of your chalk, uh, you can add some more of that chalk in and then you can add some fixative when everything is dry. Um, however you want to enhance your background, um, whatever you wanna do this is your painting. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Uh, so definitely share with me. I can't wait to see it. You can always tag me at Painted Cicada on all of the socials. Um, or I would love it if you would consider joining um, the Painted Cicada's Art and Share on Facebook. It is uh, my my Facebook group where you can share all of the creations that you have made with me um, or anything that you create on your own, but I can't wait to see it. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. A special shout out to my supporters um, who make this all possible. Uh, if you are at all interested in becoming a supporter, you can do that on my Facebook page. It's only $4.99 a month and you get each and every painting that I have um, that I offer live. And then you can also uh, scroll back and see some of the older paintings that we've done as well. Um, so shout out to my supporters who uh, typically watch the replays and paint along with me that way. Um, so glad to have you all. Thank you so much for giving me grace uh, through that small section where I was muted. Um, that was a dull moment. Um, and I will see you all next time. Have a great night, everybody.